Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. So today I'm very excited checking out Foresight, a game of deception from Lakeside Games. This is for two players with a four-player variant. Age is eight plus. will take you, I don't know, about 10 to 20 minutes to play. And in Foresight, this is an abstract strategy game in which you're trying to get three in a row to score a point or four in a row to try to win the game. But where the game gets interesting is that you're not only going to be playing your pieces, but you're also going to have to play your opponent's pieces and you're going to have to play the pieces that your opponents and you will be able to play on top of so you can score points. What am I talking about? Let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Foresight. So first and foremost, we have a handy dandy rule sheet. It is one page, single sided. These are variations down here, so honestly all you're going to need is this chunk of text right there. And it's pretty well done except for one big glaring rules thing they forgot to mention, which is what happens if someone cannot play something on their turn, which actually happens uh, probably once every game or two. It's kind of a big oversight there. We just kind of made up a house rule that if you can't play on your turn, then the next player just goes again until... Uh, the other person can play but really they should have had the foresight ho, 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 to mention it but in foresight what you're trying to do is you're trying to get to four points if you can get to four points then you will be the winner of the game you're going to get points by getting three in a row or four in a row if you get three in a row then you move up one on your point tracker here's the red one here's the orange one and if you get four in a row then you just win the game good for you so how does it work let's go with the components let's get into the gameplay so you're going to get white orange and red pieces but you are going to be a particular color so i am the orange and this is the red so you actually will be playing your opponent's pieces in this game now the white pieces are the ground floor and you have to have white pieces before you can put orange or red uh let's just show you how the game works and you'll quickly get a good feel for it so first person turn they're always going to have to put white down because you really don't have a choice they might put it right here so now the next player is either going to have the option to put red or orange on top of this white or put a white somewhere else you know what maybe they'll go right here and me seeing that's a middle spot i'll be like yeah i might jump on that i might throw my orange right down there this person might come back and he might go you know down here and now I'm looking, I'm looking, this doesn't really help me, this doesn't really help me in my own particular area, so maybe I'll try and bait him a little bit. Maybe I'll just put this right here, hoping that he will put that right there, but instead he's going to come back and he's going to go, you know what, I'm going to play your orange piece, because he's eventually going to have to play four of my orange pieces. And I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm like, whoa, that's kind of an odd choice. It is actually, it's actually a poor choice, uh, now that I look at it. Um... So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and bait him into playing some of his red. So maybe I'll... No, I won't. I'll go... I'll go right here. And then this one, he probably would actually play his red at this point. And then I would go ahead and just kind of slide my orange right there. Because now I can do either one of these is going to get me a point. I'm blocked here. Uh, yeah, so... Oh, what am I going to do next? This guy would go, and he might go right here, because that's really not going to help anybody. Then I might go right here, because once again, not particularly helpful for anybody. Then he's going to take a look at the board. He's really not in a good spot, so he might go ahead and do that one right here. And what you're trying to do is you're kind of trying to bait somebody into playing all their pieces. At this point, I would probably go right here. This is a really good spot for me to put red, because it's not helping them at all. Orange, likewise, might go right here, even though that is a little bit of a gamble, because then I have two, I have half of the four in a row that I need. Let's see. Oh, I can put this red here, quite safely. So I would put this red right here. Uh, and what would they do? What would that person do? Red, 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 red. Uh, red would probably go, I guess, right here. No, they would probably go right here. And then I might just kind of jump in on this. Uh, but anywho, you're getting the idea. And eventually what's going to happen is someone is going to get three in a row. If they get three in a row, then they go up one point. If you ever manage to get four in a row, either by you placing it there or by you trapping your opponent into having to place it there, then you immediately win the game. Now, you may ask yourself, what if someone only gets to two or three points during a round and then you're out of pieces? Well, in that particular scenario, then you take all the pieces off the board and you restart, but with uh, whatever scores you had from the last game and you rinse, wash, and repeat, and the first person to reach four will be the winner of the game. That, in a nutshell, is how you're going to play Foresight.
Alright then, Foresight from Lakeside Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. This is a two or four player game, very limited player count. Uh, also, it is an abstract strategy game. There is no theme here whatsoever. It's just try to get your reds in a row or try to get your oranges in a row, and that will be a turnoff to some people. The rules oversight is pretty big. I really don't understand how they missed that rule in there where... Uh, what do you do if someone cannot play on their turn? Because it happens about every other game, and I just don't see how they missed it in playtesting. It's just kind of an odd choice. We house-ruled it to where you just skip their turn and keep on going, uh, which I imagine would be the only thing you could do. But still, the fact they didn't mention it is kind of weird. Any other cons I have with this game? You know, it's out of print. It's going to be kind of difficult to find. It is repetitive. The game, you're doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. You're going to want an even skill level here, too. I found that in the classroom that I was playing uh, with, with two different girls, and I crushed them just every single time. And they got better, like, but the first couple games, it was like zero to four every single time. Because there is this forward planning, and there is like that element of uh, like connect four, where you're just trying to trick your opponent, like, oh, look over there, look over there, look over there, bam, beat you. That sort of thing. Uh, I did see that once I let the kids play with it, it was a very even playing field, and they and they were very close games. The kids were really into it. It was tense. It was like the thing where you could see kids trying to trick other kids, and you, you don't want to say anything because it's like, oh, if you go there, you can block them, because obviously that would ruin the game. Uh, but that was a lot, a lot of fun to watch, actually. But moving on to the pros... Because I don't have too many other cons with uh, Foresight. I really enjoyed Foresight. I think it's a very good abstract strategy game. And I'm not the biggest fan of abstract strategy games. Uh, and I'm not the biggest fan of a lot of these old school games. But this one does stand the test of time. And if I didn't have so many games, I probably would keep this game in my classroom for the kids to play. As it stands now, I'm not going to keep this game. I'm going to give it away to one of the kids in my class because they absolutely loved it. But it's still a very good game. So what do I like about the game? Easy to learn. Easy to teach, aside from that one's rule snafu. I liked it at two players and at four players. Four players was really interesting because you're not supposed to talk. You're not supposed to be like, oh, I'm, I'm doing this so you can do that. It's just the kind of thing where I'm going to play this and hope that my teammate understands what I'm trying to do that, which adds an interesting element to the game because I talked about how uh, you're trying to trick your opponents so you can win the game, potentially get three in a row or four in a row. But with this, you don't want to be too tricky because you're – teammate might not get what that you're setting the trap which makes it really fun when they do get it or really funny when they don't get it you're like oh i want you to go there because then we could have done this and i enjoyed that aspect of the game that being said you have more control of two players obviously which is normally what you want in abstract strategy games but it's not a bad four player game but i still think it's a little bit better at two players uh the pieces are nice you got these big fun to play with pieces um and, and it's a good game. I, I really did enjoy it. Uh, I probably played it five or six times. The kids in my class probably played it another dozen times. You know, they were taking turns. They were teaching to people. And that's another great thing about this game. I would consider this not only to be a family game or a decent two-player game. I, had, I have not got the chance to play it with adults. But also a children's game, which is something that I was very surprised about because... I taught two kids, and then they taught the rest of the class. They taught about seven or eight other people in the class, and um, there you go. It, it's that simple that you can do that, because on your turn, it's just lay down pieces. Really, the only rules you need to follow are you have to put a white piece down before you can put a red or an orange piece down, and don't forget to get your points when you score three or, uh, three or four in a row. But there you go. That is Foresight, a game of deception from Lakeside. A game that, surprisingly, I can recommend if you happen to be looking at this video while you're sitting in a thrift shop to decide whether or not you can get it. If you don't mind abstract strategy, two players or four players, this is definitely one you might want to check out. Very good game. I had a, I had a good deal of fun with it. So that is Foresight. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below or the comments below. Let me know if you could go back in the past and have the foresight to do one thing to change your life today, what would it be? For me personally, it would be... Oh, that's a hard one. That's a really difficult question. Uh, right, like, what would affect me today? Like, not not in a, in a broad sense, but, like, today. Like, this actual day, right here. This seemingly normal Tuesday. Um, I guess I would say 
telling my wife not to park on the weird side of my buddy's house. So uh, about a month ago, my buddy was, uh, my buddy Eric, who actually helps me do the Gen Con Bonanza, I always park in the same spot at his house, which is like right off this really fast street where the people go way too fast. It's kind of thing where you just you just shake your head every time they go by. You're like, oh, dear God, there's kids everywhere. Why are they going this fast? Uh, but somebody hit her car and then just psh, sped off. Uh, minivan. It didn't do any, like, major damage, we thought, but now, like, the, the minivan started, like, rumble and stuff, and it's like, this is bad. So we're about to take it into the shop and see how much damage is going to be done, how much we got to pay for it. Uh, so, yeah, if I had the foresight, it'd be like, hey, don't park there. I had a premonition, babe. Park on the other side. Uh, let me know in the comments below. It's a really difficult question. You have the foresight to, to impact anything that happened to you today. Yeah, you, you know the question. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.